my goodness. That is some serious energy. I, uh, wow, seriously, if I could bottle that, I could, if I could bottle that, I could quit taking amphetamines. I think that would be, uh, no. I'm kidding, I would never stop that. But, um, <laughs> I'm glad you have energy. I need it this week so bad because I'm exhausted. I haven't been sleeping this week because they just started renovating my apartment building, which has been a nightmare because they have these guys coming in doing construction 8 o'clock every morning. Now, I'm a comedian, so 8 a.m. comic standard time is like, what, 5 a.m. your time? So, so all week, I haven't needed an alarm clock, a wake-up call. Every day, like it or not, I've been waking up to this. Oh, man. Four seizures I had from that this week. Not to mention, when they were doing the construction, they accidentally drilled into the cable line. They knocked the cable out for my whole building. See, you don't, yeah, you don't realize what hard it is not having cable in today's day and age. It's everything now, right? It's the phone, it's the internet, it's the good channels. <laughs> Like Access TV, shameless plug, there we go. <laughs> but seriously, going a whole week in my place without cable, I feel like I'm one horse and buggy away from being legally Amish. <laughs> but I find it interesting how people have very different noise tolerances and stuff, usually based on where they're from. Like New York City people have a very high noise tolerance. My buddy was teasing me when I was complaining about the construction. He lives in the city, he's in Manhattan, but he's uptown, like way uptown, like near Vermont. And so, <laughs> Ooh, you guys are taking geography. That's great. Right, so he lives on the second floor of one of those buildings like we have in the city where it's right in front of where they got the elevated subway tracks going by. I'm like, how do people live there? Like, I'm whining too about construction in my place for, what, five, six days? His place? We're talking like every five, six minutes. You know, you, you can't even, you, you got an A-train barrel in front of your place. You can't even have a conversation. It's like, hey, dude, what's up? Not much, man. It's funny, though. I just got back from the... Dude, I'm like, how do you? Seriously, can we can fix that? 2014, we got robots on Mars. We're cloning sheep. Can we fix the PA on the subway? Is all I'm saying. No, seriously, we need to get our technological priorities together in our country. We're always building new stuff. Let's fix the old stuff first. How is it possible? 45 years ago, actually this summer, we just had the anniversary. 45 years ago, we had the technology. Back then, we were putting dudes up on the moon. Now, think about this for a moment. The moon is 250,000 miles away and in the middle of outer space. Yet somehow, everyone on Earth had no problem hearing this man say, That's one small step for man. <laughs> But somehow, to this day, on planet Earth, not even, what, two feet from any drive through it's still... How's that one possible? Anybody? Three. Can we uh, maybe get the lovely folks at Apple to do something about that? Uh, spe <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah, the, uh, you, know, you know what we really need to do, uh, fix uh, technology-wise, are the, uh, the cell phones. Those have been out a while. They need to work now, don't you think? I was just talking to my dad tonight. He, he called me earlier. He called me from his cell. And I, and I hate when my dad calls me from his cell because, well, it's embarrassing having a dad in prison. And so I um, just want to make sure you're paying attention. Okay. And, uh, I hate when he calls me from the cell phone because he's in the city. He's always in his car. And my dad's one of those guys. He'll call you from the car and then he spends half the conversation yelling at traffic while you talk to him on the phone. Every chat with him is like, hey, dad, what's up, guys? Stay up in the car. Just got to work. I was wondering if you. Screw you! Dad, it's not you, this cab just cut me off. Did you see that son of a bitch? And, oh yeah, I love when he asks me that brilliant question. Did you see that son of a bitch? Yeah, no, I didn't, Dad. But I think I have to go change my underwear now. Thank you very much. I told him, I said, I told him he's not allowed to call me from the car anymore. In fact, I told him he's also not allowed to leave me messages from the car. That's just as a bad. Because what I'm saying, in New York, with the, the buildings, the signal cuts out, he wonders why I don't return like half of his calls, because he keeps leaving messages on my voicemail like this. Yeah, I saved your father here. I'm in the car. It's got to work. Up. I've, been, I've been later tonight. So I was wondering if up at 830 would be great. So can you give me a call? I'll be at 212. 
I mean, it's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, oh, ours. <laughs> my, my dad is, uh, my dad's a character. My, my, my dad, the reason my dad talks that way is, well, he doesn't talk that way. That, that'd be weird. Like, hey, Stephen, up and later. Up and later. <laughs> That'd be creepy. Ooh, did I just do jazz hands on a comedy show? How did... Let's just keep that between us and the millions of people at home. I, uh... No, the reason my dad talks away, my dad's a newscaster, so he's got that really deep, loud, authoritative broadcaster voice, which on TV is great, but in public, unnecessary. And the worst is when you're a little kid and you're growing up and you get in trouble and you've got to get yelled at or scolded by someone who talks like that, it puts the fear of God into you. Oh yeah, especially with my dad, who by the way was like king of the scolders. I had one of these dads, I think half the time he was inventing stuff to scold us about, because some of it didn't even make sense. He actually once said this to me, he goes, hey, knock it off. You know, when I was your age, I was a lot older than you. <laughs> my, I think dad's been drinking. <laughs> But the worst, though, is if ever I was so bad that my mom would have to go and, like, call him up at work. You know when moms finally are fed up? They've had, oh, that's it, I'm calling your father. That was the worst, because he was ordering that newscaster frame of mind. So whenever I'd get yelled at, I always felt like I was a breaking story. Oh, yeah, he'd pick up the phone in that newscaster cadence. He didn't play. Like, how's your father? Now your mother just told me what you did. Well, I'll tell you something, mister. You're in a lot of trouble. And you're going to get it when I get home. Tonight at 11. <laughs> My mom is, uh, my mom, my mom's funny too with the messages. She, her problem is the opposite. My mom will call you up. You know, if somebody has a, a story to tell you, they'll, they'll call you up on your machine and they'll say, uh, they'll say, hey dude, I got a funny story for you. Call me back. And, and then you call them back and they tell you the story. My mom just leaves the entire story on the answering machine. <laughs> and it's not even important stuff. It's like where she went shopping that day, medical updates from distant family members I hadn't even seen since I'm eight, you know? So I basically got a brand new phone number just for my parents to leave me their crazy messages. And I have a good old fashioned answering machine to go with it, with the button. So now when I'm home and they call, and I listen to their messages like this. Beep. Hi, sweetie, it's your mother, remember me? I'm the woman who gave birth to you. It's been three days and I would like to know that you're still alive. Look at me, I'm sitting here and I am reading through the obituary column. And I am not seeing your name any place. So I'm expecting a call. Love you. Beep. Yeah, I see you with your father here. I'm in the car. Your mother's calling. I bet it's like, I bet where you are. So, I bet it's like, of course. Beep. Hi, sweetie. Guess who? I love guess who. Like, I have no idea whose voice. This... Sweetie, it's mom. Where are you? Wait a minute. Lunch next weekend. Because it's your sister's birthday. And everyone's coming over, and we're <laughs> shopping yesterday, and I bought the most beautiful 30 percent off. I couldn't believe it. And the woman with him Aunt Sylvia's stool sample came back from the lab. I don't know the duck. When I was nine. I memory. That's it for me, guys. You've been awesome. Enjoy the show. Good night. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV.